Hello and welcome. This video is intended to follow the foundational video that we had earlier wherein we introduced the five basic types of accounts, assets, liabilities, equity, revenue and expenses, and we also introduced debiting and crediting, what those do to those account balance to debit something or to credit something and what its effect is on that, on that account. This concept, deferrals and accruals, are what distinguish between being a cash basis business or an accrual basis business. Cash basis is just as the name implies. You would only recognize revenue when you receive the cash for whatever service or goods that you sold. And you would only recognize an expense when you pay the cash. So you can obviously see how there may be a distortion depending on the timing of that receipt or payment. And it wouldn't give you a good picture of the uh, health of the business or what the activity of the business was. So therefore we have to defer or accrue in order to satisfy what's called the matching principle and we'll get into that in the slideshow. But just remember deferring or accruing are what will satisfy the matching principle where you match revenues with expenses and know that every business if you have published financial statements those financial statements must be on an accrual basis. Cash basis is okay for tax reporting and when you do your tax return as an individual you're on a, ta on a cash basis to do that. But for a business you have to be on an accrual basis. So let's get into the slideshow. Okay let's get into the mechanics of deferrals and accruals and how we accomplish that. Some basic definitions. To defer means to put off. Procrastinate. Something I'm very good at. Maybe you are too. But we'll, we'll, we'll put off the recognition of that expense or, or revenue. To accrue means to be added. In other words, you're going to need to do something now in terms of recognizing the revenue or the expense. In accounting, you are accruing or deferring the act of recognizing. And recognizing really just means recording, making that debit or credit. So you're deferring or accruing the recognition of expenses or revenue. And remember, defer means not now but later, and accrue means do it now. So why do we defer or accrue? And the answer is we need to match revenue with the expenses which produce that revenue. In accounting, in accounting this is called the matching principle. Now going back, what is revenue? Revenue was the inflow of assets. Expenses were the using up of assets. And when we have our income statement, revenue minus expenses to see well, if we have net income or net loss, that is a measure of the performance of the business. So to, you have to get this appropriate matching in order to have an accurate depiction of how your business did. There are four truisms, or rules if we will, of deferrals and accruals. And this really is something you should memorize, but hopefully you won't have to memorize it because once we go through the illustrations of each of these four truisms, it will make perfect sense to you. So, the first truism, deferring an expense will create an asset. So we're, we're deferring or we're putting off the recognition of an expense and, what, and the act of doing that is going to cause us to show an asset on our books. So let's get into an example of a business transaction of this first truism. So the transaction is that we prepay three months worth of rent for a satellite sales office. Let's say we have several offices and the landlord at this particular location that we're going to have some employees at says, I'd like you to prepay three months worth. So what we will do, and we're going to give that landlord cash, so we're going to reduce cash, credit cash for 3000 but we're going to debit $3,000 to this account called prepaid rent, which is an asset. Now, what are we deferring or putting off? We're putting off the recognition of that rent expense and we're going to, we're going to then recognize it in the appropriate month. So in the first month, that should have a thousand dollars which is one-third of the amount we paid it'll have rent expense of a thousand and we will amortize or credit prepaid rent for that thousand dollars and we'll do the same thing in the second month 
and the same thing in the third month. And look what happens at the end of the third month. We take that last credit of $1,000 and what's happened to prepaid rent? It's gone from 3000 reduced by 1000 here, by 1000 here, and by 1000 here, so it's gone down to zero. But the important thing is, each month got recognized with only its proportionate share of rent expense, which is $1,000 per month. So that was the act of deferring the expense will create an asset. We deferred rent expense, we put it off to the appropriate month, and, when we, and by doing that, we had created this asset called prepaid rent. Accruing foreign expense is going to create a liability. What do we mean by that? What do, you, what do you mean accruing an expense? Here's an example. If you're in a business, chances are you're going to get sued. And the litigation process happens very slowly. The wheels of litigation turn slowly, as we've heard. Now, if this lawsuit is happening right now we've been served and maybe there's been a jury selected and so the process is going on but what do we need to do today we need to get with our lawyers and ask them what do you think is going to happen is it probable that we're going to lose this and if we do lose how much is it going to cost now we're not paying the money yet but what we're going to have to do is accrue for that loss and show it today do it now. Remember the, the definition of accrual. It, shows, it says do it now. So we need to debit this anticipated loss, which is an expense, for five, $500,000, if that's what the lawyers estimate it to be. And we need to recognize this liability that we'll call accrued litigation loss for that half million dollars. Now, litigation takes its course the jury decides and they hand over a judgment of four hundred thousand dollars and we have to pay immediately to the plaintiff what is our entry on the books well there's that payment of four hundred thousand going out the door but remember we already recognized a loss now it was a an estimated amount of five hundred thousand dollars so we need to now wipe that off the books because we're settling up the liability, the good news is we settled it up for $400,000. So the first thing is get rid of that accrued loss, which was a liability. And then we will have a little bit of a mismatch here, but we need to credit the loss in the period that we pay it for the $100,000 just to even it up because we had a loss in the previous period back when we recognized this of a half million and it's because we didn't have perfect information and a crystal ball to look at we did our best guess and put 500,000 we now need to adjust that by crediting uh, loss for a hundred thousand dollars the third truism in deferrals and accruals is that deferring revenue putting off the recognition of the revenue will create a liability now what do we mean by that? What's the business transaction? And you probably have done this in your personal life, maybe when you uh, prepaid a, a prescription, a, excuse me, a subscription to something like Sirius XM Radio or your newspaper. But let's, let's say here that we are a landscaping company and so we're providing this landscaping services uh, service to other businesses and we got cash up front and we for a job that's going to take us about three months to complete so the same thing when I talked about Sirius XM and I did this recently I prepaid three years worth of subscription so if you're Sirius XM and you got my money you have three years now over which you need to earn that money that I gave you and in this case we got we were paid by our customer ten thousand dollars of cash so we debit cash it increased by ten thousand dollars now, should I recognize that entire $10,000 as revenue today? After all, it's going to take me three months to get the job done. So what I need to do is say, yes, I got the money for $10,000, so I'll debit cash. But I recognize this liability of $10,000. Remember, liabilities are what you owe. Now, I don't really owe it, but, I, but yet I do. If that is canceled, Perhaps I then have to give a full refund of that $10,000. So it really is a liability. Now, as I do the work, 
as I earn this revenue each month, I will then take a share of it and I'll reduce the liability by debiting the liability for one third of the amount and then I'll credit revenue, revenue earned for that one third and I'll do that each month until the liability is gone and I have fully earned the revenue. But notice what's happened. Each month is getting its appropriate share of the revenue which is $3,333 a month. The final truism is accruing revenue will create an asset. And remember, we're, we're not cash basis people, so I may get the cash now or may get it later, but I have to recognize the appropriate amount of revenue in the period. So if I have to accrue the revenue, it will create an asset. Now when you see this type of transaction, it's very typical of most businesses. So let's look at the transaction or the event. On the 25th day of the month, we receive an order from a customer for a list of supplies and the terms are FOB shipping point net 30 days means the FOB is free on board or freight on board and the title is going to pass to the customer at the point of shipment they'll owe us money in 30 days for that for those goods that we ship to them and we pack the order today and it leaves our dock that same day so what do we do what on our books today after it leaves the dock we need to debit accounts receivable and credit revenue we have fulfilled our obligation completely. We packed the goods, we shipped it to the customer, they now legally owe us this money. And so that's our asset that we created by accruing the revenue. We create the asset of $15,000. And notice then we've got the end of the month that happens. So this 15,000 of revenue will be shown in the current month. Now 24 days later, the customer pays us and what we'll do then is get our cash, debit cash for 15000 and then credit the account receivable for 15000 and everything is good. This diagram may look a little busy but I hope by the time we break it down it won't seem so complicated. It's, it's a flow diagram and it's also a picture of a timeline with today and the past and the future. So let's start through this and go through the different branches. So the first decision is we're asking is money changing hands today? Am I receiving money from a customer? Am I paying money for an expense or to a supplier today? And if the answer is yes, then let's ask ourselves in this decision to satisfy the matching principle in which time period does the expense or revenue belong? And remember money's changing hands now but which time period does that revenue or expense belong? Let's take the easy branch first. Let's say that I'm getting the money today and the revenue or expense belongs in the current or today's period. And that's really like being a cash basis business. And in that case, if I'm paying for something, I'm going to debit expense, credit cash. Or if a customer is paying me, I'll debit cash and credit revenue earned. It's very simple. But let's say that the matching principle demands that we have we've recognized the expense or the revenue in the past we're getting the money today but the revenue or expense because we're a cruel basis and it's already been recognized and let's look at what happens in that case if it's an expense we previously accrued the expense because that's when it belonged was in the prior period so what we would do is simply debit that accrued expense and credit cash because cash is changing hands today but we've already recognized the expense in the past an example might be where we accrued that litigation loss that we talked about earlier in the illustration okay so we're just getting rid of the liability that we previously had set up and we're debiting that accrued expense credit and cash and then in this case we've got a customer that's paying us today we're, we're debiting cash and we're crediting that accounts receivable that we set up last month when we actually earned the revenue so both of these entries we had on our previous slides now let's go back remind ourselves that cash is changing hands today we've already talked about that the matching principle mean you know uh, was um, dictating it be in the present and we just talked about in the past but let's say we're getting the money today but the revenue or expense belongs in the future 
Now that was a case where we prepaid some rent. Remember that illustration? So we debited prepaid expense, which was an asset, credited cash. And let's say it was a, a uh, case of revenue where maybe we, being, let's say, Sirius XM Satellite Radio, we got the money from our customer, so we debited cash, and we credited this liability called unearned revenue because we're going to have to deliver that service in the future, and we'll amortize that as we go through the future, and we'll then debit that liability and credit revenue. But what do we do with the, with the money we get today is we debit cash and credit liability. Okay, now let's go back and this branch and let's say the money is not changing hands today so obviously we're talking about the money that was exchanged in the past and so yes it was exchanged in the past now to satisfy the matching principle we have to then amortize the portion of the asset or liability that's being consumed earned or incurred as follows. Remember the money happened in the past so if it was a prepaid expense something that we paid cash for in the past we'll simply debit expense and credit the prepaid expense. We will amortize it and recognize that expense now. If it was unearned revenue, in other words we received cash in the past for revenue that we had to, del to earn in the current, we will debit unearned revenue and credit revenue earned. Now we're saying that money is not changing hands today, so and it didn't change hands in the past, so it's going to change hands in the future. To satisfy the matching principle, if you'll pay for the expense in the future, what we're going to have to do right now is debit expense and credit this accrual, this accrued expense payable. Again, each one of these process boxes that I'm showing in all of these branches represents what we need to do on our books today. All these branches into the future or the past are only talking about when did the money change hands. Because again, we're not a cash basis business, we're an accrual basis business. So we have to make the entries to our books to reflect that. So going back to this box, we're saying the money is going to change hands in the future. So what we need to do today to satisfy the matching principle is debit expense and credit this accrued liability, this accrued expense payable, and perhaps that's like accrued wages. And if you're earning revenue but will receive cash in the future, you'll debit accounts receivable and credit revenue earned. Again, this is a very busy slide. There's a lot on it, and it's probably best to just think about this as you either read your textbook or re-listen to the lecture. But um, anyhow, I invite questions if you have any, and I appreciate your attention to deferrals and accruals. Arguably, one of the most difficult things, but if you get this, along with your foundational concepts of your basic accounts and debiting or crediting, you are well on your way to having a firm grasp of accounting. At this point, you're probably wondering, when is all of this going to stop? It's been like drinking out of a fire hydrant, the five basic accounts, debits and credits and what those do to those five accounts and now we've thrown on top of you the deferrals and accruals and how you can't really be a cash basis business you have to go to all this adjusting of of deferring and accruing for expenses and revenues and creating these assets and liabilities but trust me it's going to get better if you understand what we've covered so far in the foundational lecture and what we've covered now in the deferrals and accruals you are going to be good to go with accounting and the rest of it is just building on this foundation. So you really should congratulate yourself because I truly believe the rest of it is easier once you understand this. So get out those flashcards, get the memorization done, make sure you understand the concept, but get it memorized and you're good to go. Thank you.